want to talk about setting up your bits and burger one of the biggest things is when you're using a helical clamp and really the straight clamp and you apply offset we're now wrapping the clamp around a round shaft i don't actually know how bits and burger designs their base diameters what within their design concept of their product but we all have the same issue where we have problems with the clamp having good contact with the shaft we can get through some light right here hopefully you can see through there we're touching here and we're touching here and our flush zone is in the middle of that with these pm 2.0s so we can tweak that in a couple of ways my preferred way is we actually go in and we take a die grinder and i will grind these high spots off until the entire clamp likes to touch or even to where the middle touches and the ends don't dan you can see here dan already cut the ends of the clamp off which i highly recommend that helps but in this situation what we're going to do is we're just going to apply a little more offset to this that'll bring the high spots farther down the shaft that's going to cheat our way into better contact across the middle we've increased the offset on this to get better contact down the clamp we're just increasing the offset you can see here we have a nice squeeze line and glue all the way out all right there's such a thing as putting too much glue and making a giant mess but you need enough glue to make sure that you are compressing it you're squishing it out you have some excess otherwise you don't know if you actually have enough on there so we're using Max Bond. These are Max 2.0 veins with Max Bond and the Max Weld primer pen. 20 seconds of clamp pressure. We go to the next vein. My, my two personal bits and burgers are over 30 years old. All right, guys, so we're throwing in our orange 456A bits knob here. We actually had started with the other knob. We're making some changes, setting up some clamps better for overall use for Dan's uh, two bits and burgers here, and I wanted to utilize the 456 here. So on the 456, top hole's four fletch, middle hole's five fletch, bottom is six fletch. We're setting up his tack arrows with a four fletch. We're gonna go ahead and align this one fletched vein to the clamp now that we've swapped out the knob. So we loosen the set screw right here in the bits knob. This loosens up the inner insert, and we can now come in here, set our clamp, magnets are strong and I'm going to align this vein to the clamp right now and it pretty much self aligns it'll rotate the insert to where we want it and then we just tighten the set screw down and now we're properly orientated so we can continue fletching super cool if you got to replace a vein on a, on a shaft really easy to line it back up quick easy simple feature oh my gosh tell me more well these things got some spinny spinny on them I'll tell you that well that's what it's supposed to look like Pro. Well, I was just showing you how much they were wrapped. <laughs> so some people like to use a Q-tip in this situation. I like just little torn up pieces of paper towel. I don't think the Q-tip absorbs as well. Um, it won't pull as much glue out of it. So then another pro tip, if you don't know, always tip your veins. It really, the backs and the fronts, the backs because they'll get hit by other arrows and that can cause the back of the vein to lift. Um, even with great adhesion, that really helps and then the fronts, because if you go through a lot of targets, this particular arrow, we're gonna shoot it through a chrono later, but a 75 pounds out of a 340 grain, yes, that is sub five grains per pound arrow. We're gonna be really putting the Matthews through its strain. These boys are gonna be fast.